A 76-year-old man with a four-year history of progressive dyspnea was referred to our department for a specialist opinion. Two years prior, he had been diagnosed with a deep vein thrombosis in his right leg, bilateral pulmonary emboli, and aneurysmal dilatation of his proximal pulmonary arterial tree. He was initially managed conservatively. Over the next two years, repeated CT scans showed progressive dilatation of the aneurysmal PA segments, with repeated formation of non-inclusive thrombi, despite anticoagulation, initially with apixaban and then with warfarin. 18F FTG PET CT scan showed increased metabolism in the patient's pulmonary arteries, carotid arteries, and the aortic arch. Laboratory investigations found an elevated CRP protein concentration and a P anchor of 1 in 40. Based on the presence of a vasculitis primarily affecting the pulmonary arteries and in the absence of mucocutaneous or ocular involvement seen in Beckett's disease, a diagnosis of huge stoven syndrome was made. He was commenced on pulsed methylprednisolone followed by six cycles of cyclophosphamide and was referred for consideration of surgical intervention. This 3D reconstructed CT image demonstrates the extensive aneurysmal change. The main pulmonary trunk aneurysm was 49 millimetres, the left interlobar pulmonary artery aneurysm was 50 millimetres, and the right interlobar aneurysm was 41 millimetres. Considering the size and location of the aneurysms, we decided that surgery was not feasible. At review six months later, he was tolerating warfarin and cyclophosphamide, Symptoms were stable, yet PET-CT demonstrated ongoing mild activity in the pulmonary artery walls. A further five cycles of cyclophosphamide with repeated FGG PET scan is planned. Hughes-Stoneman syndrome is a rare systemic autoimmune vasculitis considered to be a variant of Beckett's disease. Usually diagnosed in men aged 18 to 40 years, presenting with a constellation of venous and arterial thrombosis, intracardiac thrombi and arterial aneurysms predominantly in the pulmonary and bronchial arteries. The disease is typically fatal due to unpredictable massive homopsis. Successful management depends upon prompt diagnosis and initiation of immunomodulating therapies. In patients presenting with recurrent or persisting beta thromboembolism and a pattern of pulmonary embolism associated with aneurysms of branches of the pulmonary arteries, a diagnosis of a vasculitis should always be considered.